When it comes to the theory of evolution, one of the topics that can be most misleading is human evolution. And when I say misleading, I don't intend to say that any scientists or educators are intentionally misleading or deceiving people about the evidence. They are presenting what they honestly believe is the truth about human origins. So when I say misleading, I am talking about the evidence itself and that the evidence itself in the way that it's presented is not quite what it seems to be. And so I think there's several reasons for that. But of course, one of the big problems with this field of human evolution, the study of human evolution, is that everyone who studies in this field starts with the assumption that evolution is true. And so they speak very boldly to the media and in their own literature um, with that assumption of the truth of evolution. And then it's no surprise when paleoanthropologists who fully believe that evolution is true and who go out looking for human ancestors that would be you know, transitioning from an ape-like creature to a human, it's no surprise that they find what they're looking for, that they find evidence to confirm what they already believe. So there's a great potential for human bias and for humans to misrepresent the evidence unintentionally, and I think that's what's happening here. This comes from the Smithsonian website, and here you have what looks like 20 human ancestors. And when you see this, it's like, wow, it looks like there's so much scientific evidence for human evolution. I mean, we have all these representatives throughout history. It looks like there's this very ape-like creature going back millions of years, and then it looks like there's a slow progression until you come up to modern humans today. And so it looks very compelling. But what I wanna show you is that it's not quite what it seems to be. And I propose to you that what you're actually looking at is a combination of extinct apes and then ancient humans. So that there actually isn't a transition happening here, but that you're looking at some apes and you're looking at some humans. The, the progression is not there. And what you have to understand when you look at these artistic renderings is that there is a great potential for misrepresentation. First of all, we don't have the complete skeleton for most of these supposed human ancestors. In some cases, we only have a few bones. So these entire forms are being reconstructed with uh, paleoanthropologist guesswork and you know artistic license. So there is a, a lot of guesswork in this field, and that is really something that you need to understand about paleoanthropology is that it is it's a soft science. It is not an empirical science in the same way as if you go in to get a blood test and you know the doctor is testing for various chemicals within your blood. You know, that is solid empirical science. That is science that doesn't require guesswork. It, it has no potential to show for bias. You're just clearly seeing, you know, what is in the blood. Well, that is not the way it is at all with this field of human evolution. And this field is full of guesswork and it has a great potential for bias. And so, um, one of the things that is very misleading that I found on the Smithsonian website is this page about the uh, dating methods used with human evolution. It says, here are some of the well-attested methods of dating used in the study of early humans. Potassium argon dating, argon argon dating, carbon-14, thermoluminescence. Okay, going on and on. Well. That is a misleading statement because it makes you think that these, all of these human ancestors, that we are dating these ancestors with these methods 
of solid empirical science that it doesn't require guesswork and that is simply not true and this is a huge topic so i'm not going to go in depth with this but the dates that are given for these ancestors are fluid and they change they over the year they change them up so if you if you're you know they they'll change one of these ancestors by a couple million years sometimes so the the dates move around they're fluid and when you're talking about solid empirical science you don't have dates moving like that i'll do another video that's just focused on the dating of the supposed human ancestors but in this video i'm just trying to give you an overview of the type of guesswork and bias that goes into the study of human evolution so let's just look at a couple more things sahel anthropus chidensis this is supposedly one of the oldest human ancestors and all that we've found of this is this part of the skull it says here on the smithsonian website walking upright may have helped the species survive so they're making a guess they're saying may have walked upright and they're doing that based on what well the the spinal cord opening is a a little more in the position of below the head than at the back so it could have walked upright but again this is complete guesswork because this is all we have and so is this really a transitional like is this a, a an ape-like creature transitioning to be a human or is this just an ape and so that i i believe this one is just an ape so this is Artipithecus cadaba, and we only have some of the cranial bones, the teeth, and then a toe bone that was found 10 miles away. Now, how do they know that this toe bone found 10 miles away even goes with this specimen at all? I hope you can see that there is so much guesswork involved with this. And it is based on that toe bone that they say that this creature walked upright. Otherwise, they say this creature is probably similar in body and brain size to a chimpanzee. So again, I believe that we are looking at an ape and I don't know where this toe bone came from, but I don't think it belongs with that creature. So I'm not a paleontologist. I don't have the expertise in this field. And so I could be totally wrong. I, it could be perfectly fine to find a toe bone 10 miles away and think that it goes with the bones, other bones of this creature that was found. I don't know, but I'm just a person who is examining the evidence that's being presented to me. And I'm not starting with the assumption that evolution is true. And when I look at the evidence that's being presented to me, I'm not seeing a compelling case for believing that an ape-like creature transitioned to a human. So I leave you to, you know, just think about the evidence for yourself. And I hope that this video has given you at least some things to think about, to think about how the evidence is being presented to you and about how much of what is being presented to you is actually artistic license um, and also guesswork from paleoanthropologists just you know making guesses about how these creatures lived about what they looked like and about how these bones actually come together and what the bones actually say about the creatures so i hope you can see that there is so much guesswork to involve this is a soft science it is not something that can be absolutely depended on like you depend on your doctor giving you a blood test all right so thank you and i hope this was helpful if you loved it please subscribe to my channel if you hated it then please dislike it and tell me what you hated about it in the comment section thanks